Hello, it's Walter here again. Hope you enjoyed the last video where I talked a bit about my early years. We've had great response so far. In this chapter, I continue my journey towards Hollywood, completing my service in the RAF, where I had my first on-screen encounter with one of the wonderful actresses I was one day worked with. I was getting home on the odd leave having been on three embarkation leaves to go aboard, all of which were cancelled. Why, I'll never know. When suddenly we got our movement orders and were sent down to the coast. This was April 1944. None of us had a clue as to why we were there. Come June the 6th and like a loving husband, decided to ask Red Ride, my squadron leader, if I could have the day off as it was my first anniversary and that my wife and I were hoping to go somewhere nice. He turned to me and said, you've got as much chance of getting away as a man in the moon. Take a look up there, said he, pointing to the sky. I looked up and the sky was black with planes going over for the second front invasion. So that put pay to my day out. The squadron was kept in strict combat training with assault courses, etc., until we were at the peak of fitness. Our squadron was assigned to an American unit and we were moved down to the Isle of Wight where we were ordered onto ships and stayed anchored offshore for about three days when we got our orders to move. This was about three to four weeks after the initial landing on June the 6th. We slowly arrived off the coast of France without the faintest idea where the hell we were until told that we were landing on Omaha Beach. Of course we didn't know what had taken place on the initial landings by the American troops. I will not go through the performances of getting off the ships and onto the shore and getting up to the top of the cliffs where there were young German soldier prisoners clearing landmines and laughing at us. This was bad enough, but one sight that will live in my memory for life. As we reached the top and looked off to the right, there was a large archway painted white that had only just been built and the inscription over the top of the arch painted in large letters read as follows underneath these arches passed the cream of American manhood and as one looked beyond the arch as far as the eye could see were white crosses and Star of David memorial plaques in remembrance of the hundreds of those young men that were killed in the initial assault on Omaha Beach the squadron moved up to Rennes, where we stayed under canvas. Then we were ordered to move forward for an attack on Saint Nazaire, where the German army was holding a position on the cliff tops. As we were moving forward to our position, a dispatch rider from our unit, who just happens to be my best friend, called us up and told us that we had to move back, and that two units were told to go towards Paris, and my unit was moved to Ghent in Belgium. Someone must have been watching us over us because we were still unseasoned troops and we would have certainly had a very rough ride. We stayed in Ghent for a while and then we were all moved up to Malmody in Luxembourg where we took our positions near a church. One night our unit was allowed to go and see a film that was being shown in the church called The Song of Bernadette starring Jennifer Jones. Looking at the screen, how was I to know or who would believe as some time later, I would be standing behind the powder puff, making up this wonderful actress. The squadron was moved into defensive positions as the Battle of the Bulge attack by the German army had started, and were moving towards Antwerp. Suddenly, the squadron was pulled out, and an armor unit came in. Came in. Fate must have been on our side, because we heard later that they were wiped out. Another side that has stayed with me was being in a small village near where we were stationed, and that is going to see the local synagogue, which was closed, but seeing lots of old and young people still in their concentration camp striped rags, with the Star of David still emblazoned in yellow on their chest, drawn and haggard, waiting outside, all in a daze, just looking for help. Nothing seems to have changed right up to this present day. My friends and I were staring in horror at the mass of skin and bones and trying to understand how one human being could do this to another. The war was coming to an end 
and we were moved up to a new place near Nuremberg, a place called Wassertrudington. The camp was situated way up on the top of a very high hill. These were the barracks that had been used by the German Air Force to train glider pilots. Some of the lads and I decided to form a band, and guess who was the drummer? We stayed there for some time. The war in Europe was coming to an end. The squadron was given various tasks to do, plus the squadron was detailed to march in the VE Day Parade in the UK. Back in Germany, we carried on doing what we had to do, plus I started to do a few haircuts for the boys. Time was moving on, the year 1946, then the long come to Nuremberg trials. My flight was detailed to attend. We arrived at the trial courthouse and were searched, then taken up to the balcony and looked down on the whole layout of the court. Our visit took place during the Russian prosecution. Again this sight will live in my memory, to see these Nazi murderers, responsible for the death of millions of innocent people, being killed and murdered. There they were on the right, lounging in the dock, and didn't seem to have a care in the world, Goring, Hess, Rittentrop and the rest of the gang. The squadron has now been moved to Hamburg, and it was getting near to the time when some of us were to be demobbed. My demob number was 40. Some of the boys which had much higher numbers were being sent out to Burma, as the war with Japan was still going on. All of us with lower numbers were keeping our fingers crossed, praying that they wouldn't get down to the lower numbers. We left Hamburg and travelled to England and arrived at an RAF station called Hendersford on Friday the 18th of August, 1946. The next day we were taken to a large hangar, which had been laid out with tables that were covered with all sorts of various suits and shirts. I picked a shirt here, a tie there, until I came to the hat counter, trying on this hat and that hat, until finally choosing one which I thought was just me. I started to walk towards the exit, where finally I walked free. But just by the door, two MP police were standing, who asked me for my demob papers. I went to my pocket. Nothing. Panic vibe set in. I just could not find them. So at the end of five years to the day, four feet away from Civvy Street, I was detained. The police took my arm and marched me round to each counter, searching for my papers. Where did we find them? Only on the hat counter, where I thought I was trying to look debonair, instead of a complete idiot. Back we went to the exit, where there was a padre sitting at the table, and he asked me if he could do anything for me. My answer was, no sir, just let me get out of here. He laughed, and so I walked through the exit doors and to a new life after five years in the RAF, which taught me understanding and more about life.